Hello and welcome to this short taster lecture in behavioral economics. My name is Dr. Helen Paul, and if you'd like to ask any questions about this talk, please do email me. I'm going to take you through ideas about something called economic man. Economic man is the basis for a lot of the traditional economic theories and modules which were used in the past. However, a new school of thought has appeared called behavioral economics, which is about how people behave in practice rather than in theory. And it owes a lot to the discipline of psychology, especially with issues around experimental design. I particularly want to talk to you about our own experiments module, which is run in our own laboratory and which you can take if you come to the Southampton economics department. In the past, theories in economics were often highly unrealistic about human behavior. People were supposed to be utility maximizing, which meant that they did essentially what was best for their own self-interest in all cases. They behaved totally rationally with regard to their choices and preferences, and they were able to access complete information. This very simplistic idea of the world is called economic man and it doesn't really help us understand how people operate in practice. In reality we know that people have incomplete information and it's costly for them to access it or to use it in any way. Plus people have noticeable cognitive biases. For instance you're more likely to pay attention to what's said first and last in a lecture. That doesn't mean that you're behaving completely rationally. We know that in reality people aren't completely rational. We think of them as having bounded rationality because they don't have complete information and they're not always processing that information without bias. Also economic man was difficult to square with ideas around altruism and self-sacrifice. And there are points where clearly economic theories based around economic man do not work. It was very difficult, for example, to believe in such a creature as economic man when you start to see financial stock market bubbles appearing, people herding into certain stocks and buying too many of them, pushing up prices to highly unrealistic levels. How can that happen if people are totally rational? We also can think about why do people believe in fake news? Again, what is it about that so-called news that attracts them instead of, for example, scientific evidence? And we all know of instances of short-termism. Anyone who started a, an exercise plan or a diet plan or even a study plan and given up halfway through will know what I mean. If we want to look at how people work in practice, we need to look at experiments. And there are three types we can use. One is a natural experiment, something that has not been planned or designed by the person running it. Essentially, it's something that happens in the real world that just is there for the economist to look at. For example, the COVID lockdown. How do people being off the streets affect, say, something like pollution targets. That again isn't something anyone planned, it's a natural experiment. Then we have field experiments which are much easier to set up and control. They are when we go out into the wider world and try to collect data maybe through surveys or other sorts of attempts to elicit a response. And a laboratory experiment is when we control the conditions within our lab. I'll give you an example of a field experiment done by our head of department, Corrado Giulietti, and two of his co-workers. He was looking at racial discrimination in local public services. Essentially, he and his team created some sort of request for help from various US entities. That could be a local police station, it could be a library, and they created a reasonable sounding request and then duplicated it 
It was two copies that are the same in every detail, except that one had a name that sounded like an African-American name and one did not. Then they sent off these requests and saw whether there was a delay in response, whether they simply got a no instead of a yes, whether the language used was more abrupt if the person thought they were dealing with an African-American citizen. And Corrado discovered that actually there were big differences in the way African-Americans were treated, especially in the former slave-owning areas of the southern states. That research was then communicated back to the people concerned who've started putting in policies to improve their treatment of their African-American clientele. Now that's a field experiment because you're going out into the world and asking for a response. A lab experiment is going to take place within your own laboratory setting. It's a much more controlled environment. The idea is that you should have a testable hypothesis and you keep things as simple as possible. So that could be around questions of whether people cooperate with one another under certain conditions, or it could be something that one of our students did. She wanted to see if people's decision-making changed if they were hungry or not. And she used people who were doing the Ramadan fast as her experimental group. You want people to be invested in what they're doing. So there has to be some sort of payoff as a function of the actions taken. That could be anything. It could be a reward of money. It could be a reward of sweets. It could be in the case of our module that some of the marks for the module are a function of the actions taken when you're you're going through the experiments. You want to have a way of distinguishing between control and treatment conditions. And anything that you can't control, you try to deal with by randomly assigning subjects. Essentially, if we look at this Bloomberg trading suite, we can't use that as an experimental laboratory. Because you can see the people here are sitting next to each other and they're able to see each other's work. With psychology laboratories and economics experimental laboratories, you can't do that. You have to have these screens so that people are not influenced by the person sitting next to them. That's why the lab is different to most just ordinary computer rooms. And that's necessary in order to do robust research. When you take experiments as a module, what we do first is we allow you to have hands-on experimental experience in that lab. You run the experiments, then you feed back on the results you obtained. The lecturer then discusses the relevant economic theory that underpins the experimental design, and you discuss the applications of that theory. This allows you to really get a hands-on understanding of how theory works in the real world and reminds you that you are not economic man and neither is anybody else. This is why ex Economics with Experiments is one of our most popular modules. Thank you very much for listening and remember, if you have any questions at all, we'd be happy to answer them for you. Thank you very much.